Hi everyone, my name is Eric. I am a former competitive figure skater and this is my figure skating reaction series. A quick little bit of background about me. I am a five-time US National Championships competitor, including uh, placing in the top 20 at the senior level in 2016. I trained for about 15 years in the Chicagoland area with top coaches, uh, including most recently Olympic coach Denise Myers. Long story short, I know my stuff. Over the past few years, I've transitioned from competitive skater to skating fan. So I thought I'd make this reaction series. In addition to being fun for myself, I thought it might be interesting for others to see how a former competitive skater uh, reacts to these skating videos. Without further ado, let's get started. I'm excited to share my analysis of Yuzuru Hanyu's uh, quadruple axle attempt at the most recent 2022 Japanese National Championships. I originally wanted to do this video with like the actual footage or, or video of him doing the jump. Um, but I've been running into copyright issues, guys. If anyone in the skating reaction video, YouTube, etc., community has any idea how to kind of deal with these issues or like has any suggestions, please let me know. But yeah, so I'm mostly going to be basing this analysis video off of the attempt that he did in his free skate um, at the Japanese Nationals. But uh, I guess I also saw a few clips of him doing it in the practices of Nationals. So I'll also be talking about those as well a bit. All right, so let's break it down. So just as a quick overall note, I think that it looks good, but like not actually super close. It's definitely way better than his, um, I think, World Team Trophy practices where he was trying those crazy quad axles in falling down and wiping out and whatever. So it's definitely better than those. So it's great to see the improvement, um, but I'm a little bit not completely getting it. All right, guys, so I'm gonna be breaking down my analysis into five different categories and then have some concluding thoughts at the end. But the five categories are, number one, speed. Number two, entrance. Number three, takeoff number four, air position, and number five, landing. All right, so let's start off with speed. In terms of his actual speed going into the quadruple axle um, in the practices as well as the actual program, I thought that I thought that it was actually pretty decent speed. It wasn't like super slow or super fast or anything. It was actually, I kind of went back and watched a few of his um, triple axles from kind of other programs videos. And I kind of thought that his triple axles, he would be going into them faster um, because I remember them. I mean, his triple axles are so impressive, but I actually realized that he doesn't go into the quad axle that much slower than his triple axle attempts, maybe just a hair slower. Um, so that was actually really interesting to see. And in general, um, I, also guys, I don't know how much of this is obvious. Maybe it depends on if you were a former skater like me or not. But because he's not going into it that slowly, um, it shows that he's actually pretty confident in attempting the jump. Not that he's confident in landing it cleanly, but he is confident in his ability to kind of have speed and like actually perform the jump and, you know, not completely, you know, break a leg or wipe out on it. Um, because generally when you're first learning a jump or adding another rotation onto a jump, even if even though you know that you need speed um, to complete the jump, obviously, you might be a little bit scared or hesitant to actually give that full speed because if you go like regular speed um, into like a quad axle that no one's been able to do before um, and you don't know exactly what you're doing, like you will wipe out and you will likely injure yourself or whatever. So, or you might, you might injure yourself. One thing I thought was interesting is that his, his actual body movement speed jumping into the jump, um, was a little bit slower kind of going into the entrance. Like usually on his triple axle, if you look at some of the other videos, I mean, he can just do it off of nothing. He just triple axle, triple axle, he can do it from no speed, he can do it from whatever. He'll just kind of go down, up, super, super fast. Um, and that's kind of like how, how his triple axle technique is now. Um, but on the quad axle, you can see him taking a little more time jumping into it. So I thought that was interesting. Um, I think he's just, I mean, really, you need to really like, so every rotation you add to a jump, 
like the more kind of perfect or like good technique you need to be. Um, so if you have like awful, awful, awful technique, you can probably do a single jump, guys. Like I feel like, you know, even people who've never skated before, they can kind of turn a rotation off the ice and like it's pretty, it's kind of similar. Like, and then you get to the double jump and then it's like, okay, you might have crestful. If you have really questionable technique on a double jump, you probably won't be able to get that triple out. Um, and then each kind of level higher, it's because you're, you have that much more time in the air, that much more time to make a mistake. If you're just slightly off, it's not going to work. Um, anyway, so I think he's taking a little bit more time to make sure he has the perfect technique. Like in the triple axis, you can kind of go into it and he'll pretty much get it and his body really knows what's going on. Um, obviously the quad axis is a little bit of a different story. Also, when you go just a little bit slower into that jump, you really get into that knee bend a bit more you're gonna, he's trying to get that height because you need that much more height to do the quad axle. If you notice like his quad axle is definitely higher than his triple axle because he's getting more rotations. He's getting like four rotations instead of three and a half. And so it's just, I thought that was interesting as his speed was just a little bit slower in the actual movement uh, and entrance going in. So let's move right along into the entrance. So guys, a quick note on entrances. Um, entrances are so important, arguably, the most important part of a jump, actually. Well, there's a lot of important parts to a jump, but one of my favorite um, international Olympic uh, coaches always said, if there's a jump, right? So let's say you're doing the jump here um, and you're going into it from here, right? She always said, you you land the, you don't land the jump here, even though like, clearly you land the jump here. You don't land the jump here, you actually land it over here. If you have a really strong entrance and body going into the jump, it'll make it so much more likely that you actually land it. So you can almost really like win that, that jump right over here instead of over there. So I always thought that was really interesting and that really resonated with me. So it's important to look at his entrance. So um, it's at the beginning of his program, obviously. Um, he is going around, he just has kind of some simple crossovers and steps, whatever. Um, one kind of interesting thing um, was that you see him doing this thing, he just goes like this um, right before he kind of goes into it. In fact, he actually basically was doing that um, right before the program started. And then it's funny because usually like right before program starts, you can watch any skater and they're kind of pre preparing for usually their first jump, usually their hardest jump. They want to feel that over the right side. They want to feel like the tight air position or whatever it is. Um, so that's like to be expected. But then for him to like do that, um, basically do that again, almost as part of the choreography, but not really, um, right before he goes into it. Like that just really goes to show how important this muscle memory thing is, right? He's done axles a gazillion thousand times. He's done the quad axles. He's, he's been training it, right? But to get that feeling, he's like right before he goes in, he like does this on like two feet. So it's like not super attractive, but it doesn't matter. Like he should do that, do whatever he needs to before the quad axle, obviously. Um, but that's just one thing to kind of just um, notice right there. And then it's kind of interesting that he still chooses to do the, uh, was it uh, the three turns? I think it's uh, right back outside three turns before he goes into an edge pull um, into the actual jump. Um, that's just fascinating to me because like in general, whatever the hardest jump someone is doing or something that they're not quite comfortable with yet, um, that is when you see their, that is when you see what they're actually comfortable with in terms of an entrance. So you can see all these fancy entrances into maybe even Yuzu's triple axle, right? He goes from like the four takeoffs, like crazy things that no one else can do. But when you see him going for a quad, this is like, you can just be like, okay, this is what he feels most comfortable with, with doing the quad axle. He doesn't, no one cares about, you know, for this jump right now because no one's even land, ever landed it fancy transitions in or out like that is not the point the point is to land the jump so i just thought it was interesting that what makes him comfortable with the jump is doing the three turns and then the power pull um because for other people like for me that would be distracting and like very difficult but like i also had other weird entrances into my double axle um but it's just interesting to see that that is what he's comfortable with and i guess my take on this kind of three turn edge change thing is that um, it's interesting <clears throat> besides it just being the most comfortable for him individually, I think like, I don't know the exact, like kind of aerodynamics or like of the body or what is it called? Kinesiology, whatever. 
Um, but I find that like doing some sort of prep um, and or like entrance into a jump like the axle, which is just like four, you're just like going for it. There's no three turn before or anything usually. It actually helps set your body. So another example I'm thinking of right off the top of my head is like Elena Kostornaya, beautiful triple axle when she does it. And she does some some kind of entrance and then does like the, the big power pull and sets her body because it like, it's like a rhythm where if you get your body into the right rhythm, you can like do the jump well. So it's almost kind of like, instead of relying on your body getting the exact timing and the exact feeling on the jump itself, it's like if you get the feeling on the three turns and whatever entrance right beforehand, you can like more so guarantee that you're actually gonna do the jump well. And I guess like more just physically, I guess, um, it's like, oh, it's hard to describe, but I guess when you're doing a three turn, you do the edge pull and down up. It's like your body's going this way and then, oh wait, which way is it going? Yeah, there's like some, some kind of pressure that your body is kind of releasing or tension to so release. So then you feel the pressure going into it. I don't know, maybe that doesn't really make a lot of sense, but it makes sense in my mind somehow. Okay, let's move on to takeoff. I don't have that much to say about this, honestly. Um, it's just like, he has a great takeoff. Um, he, if you watch his video in slow motion, you can just see his leg. I mean, he does this on the triple axle already, but his right leg just shoots, like shoots up. Um, and some coaches call this like a staircase where you like step onto the staircase. And he just, he goes all the way up and then pulls in and it's, it's looks beautiful already um, on the takeoff. How I would describe like the most opposite looking of that. And it's not like it's wrong. Well, maybe it's like slightly wrong or it's not wrong, but it, it's, it would be very, it's probably be harder to do a quad axle. You know what? I don't know. People have different techniques. Um, I guess this is more of a standard one. But if you look like look at like a Yulia Lipnitskaya um, double axle, for example, she does not kick through or up like at all. Like she just jumps and then squeezes right in. Air position is super tight. Um, and that's what works for her on the double axle. Um, but Yuzu's, he um, just completely kicks all the way up before pulling in. It's beautiful. Okay, let's move on to air position. So what's interesting to see is that um, in the program, especially, or maybe it was kind of similar to the practice. Maybe it's my imagination, but I feel like he was slightly tighter in the practice. But in the program, you can see, like if you slow-mo it, his air position is not fully in. Um, so in general, right? Like in general with skating, with anything kind of aerodynamic like this, the tighter you pull, the faster you're gonna go, right? So when you're doing a really fast scratch, but you're pulling in like this. So it's so interesting that, right? You would think, oh, well, use your harness. He's doing a quad axle, the hardest jump, uh, biggest jump you could ever do, the most rotations you ever need. Why isn't he going fully in? Well, first of all, I mean, give him a break. <laughs> I, need to, I need to give him a break. So, I mean, there's a lot of potential reasons for this. I mean, he doesn't have like the absolute tightest air position. I mean, honestly, if you wanna see like really tight air positions, some of the uh, Russian women's like triples, like they're just like so tight. Like I think like even like a Trusova or someone, even or even like this, it doesn't even matter, this or this, so, so, so compact and tight, rotating so fast. Okay, you know what? Don't quote me on this, but I swear like a Trusova quad is faster rotation in the air than a Hanyu quad axle. Um, I guess you can quote me on this, but whatever. Like, I mean, it's probably not as as high, so you like need to spin faster. So maybe that's maybe that's a given. I mean, Trusa jumps really high. Anyway, all that is to say that he still has some room to pull in tighter. Also, in general, when you're like learning a new jump, and I know that there's some limitation of how much I can be speaking about this because I've never tried a quad axle. I've barely even really ever tried a triple axle, um, but in general, when you're learning a new jump, like people react in different ways, but um, something that like I do and that he's clearly doing is like landing on two fo two feet because you know you don't know exactly where your feet are, so you, you're kind of like landing on two feet, you're not sure of yourself, um, and not pulling in completely all the way tightly 
um, it can feel and sometimes even just be safer. Um, because your body, I don't know, if you pull in so tight and it's like off, you might go sideways, stuff might go down. I mean, it's physical. It's also just partially just mental, uh, a mental barrier in general, I would say. So I even thought that his practices, the, there was one practice video that looked, if you just look at it on a regular play, it looks so close. Um, and then you slow mo it, you're like, actually, I don't know how, like, if it's so, so close. Um, but I think he looked a little bit tighter in the air. And that also makes sense. I mean, when you're performing in front of, you know, such a, like, your hometown, like, so many people, everyone's looking at you, um, attempting the program. You're not going to be, like, you're generally, like, a lot of people will naturally not take as high of a risk. You know, you don't want to wipe out. You don't want to get injured, whatever it is. Um, so it makes sense that in the program that he's just a little bit loose. And he just like doesn't like quite have that last air tight air position to pull off the jump. But the kind of cool thing about it is kind of seeing, well, if he just puts pulls in a little tighter, although that's easier said than done, like you have to like there's so much force going on to pull in, like it is hard. I, I don't think the actual problem is strength in this case. It's I I don't know. My this is just my two cents. I think it's more mental. I think that's usually what it is instead of actual strength. Um, but if he just pulls in tighter, like he could get that last bit of rotation off. So that brings us to the landing. So um, it was half cheated, two footed, downgraded. It is what it is. Um, I will say not all kind of half cheated jumps or downgraded jumps are um, created equally under IJS or under um, kind of the the point system in a way i guess they're or they'll like get the same value in a sense um but sometimes people are like going for jumps that they clearly like can't really do and they get a little bit more rotation i don't know but it's just it's downgraded and it's it's just like not even close his was like like it wasn't quite there but you could tell it you know he wasn't just like like he he was getting around. I mean, he was two-footed. He kind of, uh, in the program, when he kind of let his left side go a little bit. But it was not too crazy. Like, you could imagine it. Especially in that practice video one, where he basically lands it. I think it's a little two-footed, whatever. But it's like, okay, you could see it. And I guess that kind of just brings me to my kind of last point um, or takeaway from this. Is that more than anyone, I think, ever in the history of trying this jump, at least that I've seen on YouTube or that most people have seen, it's close. Like he has the actual feeling of being able to land the quad, um, which is actually pretty significant, even though it's downgraded, even though it, like literally anyone, like I think Dimitri Aliyev tried this. I mean, it wasn't actually a, a horrible attempt, but anyone could, anyone who can like do a triple axel, they could go out there and like attempt a quad axel and have it be downgraded. And that's like, it, it kind of, happening i mean even actually just attempting it um can be really scary and so it's not like anyone can just do it but in a sense theoretically anyone could um but it's different when you can see that someone like actually has the feeling or like knows what it would be like to land it if that makes sense anyways this was a lot of rambling but i just found it really exciting and fascinating um i mean i don't think he'll be able to get it by the olympics i mean I hope he proves me wrong. I would love to see him do a quad axle at the Olympics, get a third Olympic title. By the way, side note, it was so impressive that he tried that quad axle and he still did the rest of his program, quads, everything else. Um, that was truly impressive. Um, anyways, I don't think he can get it. I think that it's close. It's it's just, I mean, if anyone can do it, maybe he could, but it's half cheated um, and you have the feeling of it, but like the last, the last half rotation is is hard, and that's what it is. I Okay, let me rephrase. I definitely don't think we're going to see a clean quadruple axle landed from Hanyu at the Olympics. That's just what I think. However, in if, if I was really um, feeling bullish about Hanyu, I would say that I could see us seeing a landed, maybe even on one foot, maybe two feet, um, quadruple axle, and maybe even, what's the one under downgraded? This is so bad, I forget my terminology. Um, the under, like the one carat or whatever. That could be possible between half, a half and a quarter and like landing on one foot. I mean, that would be a huge accomplishment. I think that's the best we're going to see this season. Um, 
honestly, if he, I don't know what his plans are. If he keeps going, like, you know, it's, it's getting there. I'd be so excited if he landed it in a competition. Um, but in terms of actually getting it, I just think it's such a low probability. And I'm not saying that just because it's the hardest jump ever and literally, and no one's ever done it. Um, I'm trying to base this somewhat off of reality. I mean, okay, I'm also basing it obviously off of just a few practice videos and one competition. Um, but, eh, you analyze with what you got. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Is Hanyu gonna get that clean quadruple axle at the Olympics? I certainly hope so as well. Um, and if there's any, and also please let me know if there's anything that would be helpful or more helpful to discuss in these kinds of videos, or if there's any different kind of content you'd like to see in the future. Let me know.